wait a moment now. We're fighting zombies and alien invasions and we're going on a trip to hell? I thought this is Saints Row, you know, the most famous of Grand Theft Auto clones. <laughs> Talk about lost in translation. At least it can't get any worse than this. Uh oh. No! Oh, oh, what the fuck? Now hold on a minute. Rent? Student loans and a waffle maker? What the fuck is this? How did this franchise go so far into the wrong direction when it started as simple as this? The very first Saints Row game would debut in 2006. The game's main story is set around gang violence in the fictional city of Stiltwater, a place where our main protagonist finds himself in the middle of a gang shootout. Saved by the Third Street Saints, he joins them as a way of repaying the debt and fights alongside them as they take out all the other gangs ruling the city. If that sounds familiar, it's because only two years prior, in 2004's Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, it focused on a very similar premise. Though in that game, the actual gang on gang violence is an extremely minor piece of the overall story. The fact that both games shared a similar theme, also being an open world crime experience, led to Saints Row being forever labeled as a Grand Theft Auto clone. However, they didn't stop it from receiving positive reviews across the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 ports, a positive reception that helped it sell over 2 million copies. Despite Saints Row being labeled as a clone, players could recognize the obvious differences. GTA always tries its best to be somewhat based in reality, and although there are comedic moments, it's a lot more of a dramatic story. Saints Row was a lot more comedic than dramatic in its plot. Characters are more over the top and so is the violence, yet people overwhelmingly enjoyed it, though many speculated if the franchise had a future to stand on. And here's the reason why. Saints Row was the perfect storm for a time. Volition picked the perfect window of 2006, two years after the release of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and two years before that of Grand Theft Auto 4. It meant the game had no direct competition from its biggest rival in the genre. The market was desperate for another open world crime game and with the biggest competitor not present, it meant Saints Row could just show up and sweep the player base uncontested. It was a free market just waiting to be picked up. However, that would all change come the sequel. In 2008, Rockstar's biggest Grand Theft Auto yet, Grand Theft Auto 4, would hit the shelves. Right after it, so would Volition's Saints Row 2. The message was clear. There was no backing down. Saints Row and Grand Theft Auto were finally about to go head to head, an inevitable event that would ultimately decide Saints Row's future. While Rockstar took a drastic turn from their previous Grand Theft Auto, focusing on an Eastern European immigrant who comes to America haunted by his past, looking for a new future, Saints Row stuck to their original street gang plotline, continuing the story from the previous game. GTA 4's story is known to be the darkest of the series. It's a story based in reality, the gruesome and somewhat depressing consequences of war and living a life of crime, a life where the people you love are in constant danger and allies you may trust or fall in love with become your enemies. A game that doesn't glorify crime, but rather shows the horrible effects it inflicts on everyone in any way related to it. In comparison, Saints Row 2 treats its story in the complete opposite direction. Crime is cool, so are drugs, guns and murder. Characters feel more like they've come from the pages of a comic book than actual reality. The violence and comedic effects are even more over the top 
than the ones from the original and this time around the main character is a lot more fleshed out, having proper dialogue and personality. And while Grand Theft Auto 4 has far more realistic graphics, with superior gameplay in both gunplay, melee combat and driving, Saints Row on the other hand had much better character customization options for both males and females, as well as more free roam jobs, crypts, and it allowed its story to be played in co-op with another player. It also offered more NPC variety and interior options than the previous game. Despite being labeled as a clone, these games were completely different, all offering a vastly different experience to players. Despite Saints Row 2's abysmal PC port, it still received mostly positive ratings from both critics and players, selling over 3.4 million copies and surpassing the previous title. Despite going up against its toughest competitor, Saints Row 2 was able to survive and thrive the genre. It was clear that the franchise was here to stay, it gave Volition tons of confidence in the series, with their sequel succeeding against all odds, and with Grand Theft Auto V not coming anytime soon, the road was crystal clear, it was time for them to produce yet another sequel. However, Volition knew that the reason they were able to stand up to Grand Theft Auto 4 is because of how over the top different the game was in comparison. So, as a way to try to distinguish themselves even further, they would double down on the wacky elements that made them so famous to begin with. The consequences of that decision would become instantly noticed in Saints Row 3. Coming out on November 15, 2011, Saints Row 3 would debut uncontested by any other game in the genre. It featured a brand new engine with better movement, improved combat and melee takedowns, as well as a brand new location never seen in previous titles. However, at the same time, it removed improvised weapons that could be picked up from the environment, Upgrades such as unlimited ammo and gold mode became irreversible, creep customizations were removed and missions were no longer replayable. Despite many upgrades in the graphics and gameplay department, there was an obvious downgrade when it comes to the content available in comparison to previous titles. However, the biggest difference by miles was the story. Gone were the days where the Saints was just about gang violence and taking over the city through crime. In Saints Row 3, it's all done with that. They're now celebrities making movies and cheesy commercials, but they find themselves challenged by a new organization even bigger than them. That sounds great on paper, but it quickly turns from a regular Saints Row into a mix between Resident Evil and Mass Effect as the saints are now fighting zombies with giant spaceships flying all around. I'm not kidding either, it feels like a completely different game and by killing the most popular character at the very start, they do themselves no favors either. The wacky tone of the previous games is completely replaced with the goofy and extremely bizarre variant of this one, and any even remote glimpse of realism the games might have had in the past is completely erased from the series. Despite all of these changes, however, the game receives overwhelmingly positive reviews and sells over 5.5 million copies, the best of any Saints Row game at the time. So you may think, well, with these types of sale figures and reception, clearly Volition made the right decision, right? No, as a matter of fact, they couldn't be more wrong, and here's the reason why. By taking such a huge step into this extreme direction, Volition sets a fatal precedent, much like how now the Fast and Furious can never go back to street racing, Saints Row can never go back to gang fighting, the very core the games used to be built around. They've permanently altered that, and with the wackiness turning into the main selling point they have nowhere else to go but up. So. Why was the game so successful? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, the game was uncontested. None of its competitors were around when it released. Second, 
Gaming as a whole started blowing up much more than it did before, and with the game featuring a much better production quality, it's not a hard choice. As a matter of fact, if you ask most of the Saints Row players, they'll tell you that this is their very first Saints Row game. And third, with the success and good word of mouth of the second Saints Row, a lot of people bought it, trusting the developers to do well. And although the game can certainly be fun, the question has to be asked. Where do you go from here? You can't go back to being a regular gang, like the originals, we've already fought on spaceships and had a zombie invasion, so what are we gonna do next? Fight aliens? Ah shit. In August 20th, 2013, Saints Row 4 would debut once again directly against the Grand Theft Auto title. In this case, it was Grand Theft Auto 5. However, by this point Saints Row was anything but a crime game. With less realism than the Looney Tunes show, we would find out that its wacky over-the-top nature had taken yet another step into insanity, as the main character of the game is now President of the United States before being invaded by a group of alien conquerors attacking Earth. They kidnap all of the members currently present. With all members kidnapped, the main character has to enter a simulation, each one bringing back some sort of a nostalgia element, a reference to a previous game, with old locations from past titles, as well as characters coming back. It's a giant love letter to loyal fans of the series, and even people who dislike the sci-fi elements admit that they love their playthrough of this game. It respects what's come before, and despite the wacky story, characters get to be themselves. It also brings back the franchise's most popular character in Johnny Gat. It has the same combat and movement of the old game, but with improved weapon variety. The main map is reused from Saints Row 3, however, you'll find many different locations throughout the simulations. The streets have no gangs featured in them, leaving you to exclusively fight aliens and cops. It sounds as ridiculous as it is. There's also no way to replay missions or reverse upgrades, much like the previous game. However, the biggest thing about this game is the superpowers. Yes, you heard that right. The game features superpowers, such as super speed, super jump, telekinesis, and etc. It's the one thing that was probably most disliked about the game as a whole, as it took the ever so goofy premise of the previous game and made it even more overboard. However, when it comes to the reception, we know it sold over a million copies in its first week, but no further sales figures were ever shown. It's the first Saints Row game to have its sales figures hidden from the public, which clearly is not good. It received positive to mixed reviews, most of them worse than that of the predecessor. While Saints Row 3 towed the line between wackiness and complete insanity, Saints Row 4 jumps right over that, and to many people's dislike. Realistically, there wasn't much else they could have done given the situation that they had put themselves in, but it's clear that the line was crossed, and with Saints Row 4 being the very first one of the series to fall short in the sales department, it was clear that the Saints Row title had lost its stability. It wasn't dead yet, Volition still had a trick up their sleeve, and come 2014, everyone would see it. Saints Row Got Out of Hell, a game about infiltrating into hell to fight Satan and prevent him from forcing the main character to get married to his daughter. Yes, it sounds just as stupid as you're hearing it. The graphics and gameplay are directly taken from Saints Row 4, making this game feel more like a full-priced DLC than anything else. You could fly and fight demons in hell, which may be cool for some, but the reality of the situation is, even the most loyal of Saints Row fans usually skipped this game and didn't play it until years later, if at all. It's another game that had its sales completely hidden due to how awful they must have been. Ratings range from average to poor. In 2024, Saints Row 3 and 4 are still able to hold up at least 100 to a couple of hundred players a month. Meanwhile, God Out of Hell 
can't even crack 30. If that doesn't tell you how the reception of this game went, nothing can. Despite the game not being terrible in terms of gameplay, as it's just a copy of Saints Row 4, the standard of what makes a good game had changed in 2015. Meanwhile, Volition are releasing games that look like they're coming from 2008 and play like they're from 2011. With them doubling down on going with this goofy direction, players quickly lost interest and left them for dead. But the funniest thing of all is what happened on the other side. Grand Theft Auto Online was doing everything Saints Row wasn't anymore. Character customization options for both males and females, as well as free roam jobs, different apartments and houses, as well as missions being playable in co-op with other players. All of the original things that Saints Row was praised for, Grand Theft Auto Online developed and established as its own, with superior gameplay and graphics, as well as a more goofy story for most of its missions, Grand Theft Auto Online became the best Saints Row game ever made. It gave players Saints Row with modern technology and graphics, unlike Volition, who were still stuck in 2010. While Volition were thinking of all types of ways to reinvent the formula and make it as goofy and unappealing as possible for majority of players, Rockstar swept in and took the original concept, turning it into a winning recipe, giving them one of the most successful online titles ever made, leaving Volition with nothing, as now the main formula that players loved had been abandoned by them and taken over by a superior developer. It was a very clear, as the years went on, that Volition didn't have what it takes to compete with Rockstar anymore. While every other developer was utilizing new engines and upgrading their graphics and gameplay to the best of their abilities, Volition were stuck in 2010 with outdated graphics and gameplay. They had run its course. For many people the picture was clear, Saints Row was dead, there was nothing Volition could possibly do that could even remotely match its competition. But with them failing to achieve success with any of their other projects, it was clear they had to give Saints Row one final shot. And that's exactly what they did. On the 25th of August 2021, an announcement trailer would debut for Saints Row The Reboot. With 45,000 likes and 76,000 dislikes approximately, it's very clear the reception wasn't what Volition were expecting. But there's a good reason for it. When most franchises reboot their titles, they try their best to keep their original characters intact, as it's those popular characters that draw fans to the game and make them care for it. The main reason for a reboot is because you want to tell new stories with already existing characters when the previous story didn't allow it. Volition, however, decided to dump that idea and remove all of their most popular characters for the purpose of introducing brand new ones. While the previous characters were real gangsters, for better or worse, badasses who felt legitimate and had a certain element of authenticity to them, these ones are a group of left-wing activists on Twitter with no physique or skill but an awful personality. A gang consisting of bisexual hipsters fighting to take over one of the most uninspired and half ass put together worlds with graphics from 2008 and gameplay from 2006. Fans were not happy, but Volition being the intelligent developer they are, reacted by acting appropriately, bashing their fans on Twitter. Haters gonna hate. We are not backing down on this. No one's rebooted like this before, and boy were they right about that. No one has ever rebooted like this. Probably because others wanted to stay in business after they rebooted. But was the game actually that bad? Well, customization is pretty good. Both the characters themselves, the weapons and the vehicles can be fully customized. Graphics are terrible. The story is about becoming a criminal organization in order to pay your student loans and buy a waffle maker. If that sounds like the stupidest thing you've ever heard, that's because it is. Gunplay is awful, it requires an insane amount of aim assist 
to be able to hit anything and even shooting non-armored enemies in the head won't be a one-shot kill. Enemies are complete bullet sponges. There's no cover system, but why would there be one in an action shooter from 2022, especially when every single mission in the game is you just running around and gunning everything that moves, with no change or alteration whatsoever. The driving felt okay to me, but I've seen quite a few complain about it. And although the game is stable enough now, it had one of the buggiest launches in recent memory, with non-stop crashes and problems across the majority of its missions. The game suffered overwhelmingly negative reviews across all platforms and was a huge financial flop, leading to Volition Studios being shut down and permanently closed. Make no mistake about it, this is not a bad game. I've played bad games, Gotham Knights, Payday 3, Battlefield Hardline, those are bad games. This Saints Row isn't a bad game, no, it's so much worse than that. This is the very worst game ever created by a major developer of all time, a literal shit stain on the pages of gaming history. This is the legacy of the Saints, a game that in the beginning revolutionized open world crime games, then fought directly against Rockstar's biggest title and survived. After all of that, the Saints legacy ends here, not with a bank, but with a whimper. A game that belongs somewhere between 2010 and 2012, created by a developer who's ashamed of their own legacy and has the arrogance to put down its own fans for the sakes of shoving their own political agendas. A game that cries and moans about the evils of capitalism while selling $3 skin packs and a full-priced game that isn't even worth a penny. No one deserves to have a game this bad. It's simply not necessary. Everyone can do better than this Saints Row reboot and have many times. It's not just embarrassing, it's shameful. Outside of the customization, there isn't a single good thing in this game. Not one. And if this is Volition at their very best, then it's an absolute miracle they were kept in business for as long as they were. And the biggest crime of it all is, the timing couldn't have been any better. Right before the Grand Theft Auto 6 leaks, when everyone was desperate for another open world crime game to play, to have the perfect window of opportunity and botch it to this extent is somewhat ironic, because at the end, it wasn't Rockstar or any other developer that was responsible for their downfall. At the end, it's Volition that killed themselves and the Saints Row franchise. Until next time, this has been Wild Gold, and thank you all so very much for watching.